Hello lovelies, I'm here to bring us our new moon forecast for the new moon in Leo happening at 12.55 p.m. on Thursday, July 28th. The start of Leo season is July 23rd, so this new moon in Leo is relatively early in the Leo season. And the cards that we are looking at are the Eight of Swords, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Eight of Cups. Uh, seeing some balance there with those two eights on either side of the Knight of Pentacles. So that's something that we will circle back to. The next three cards are the Magician, the Chariot, and the Seven of Cups. So the Chariot is a seven and the Seven of Cups, another seven. Seeing some numerical patterns here. The last three cards are the Wheel of Fortune, the Empress, and the Queen of Swords. So our first two cards, excuse me, first three cards are in regard to the dark phase of the moon, the phase in which the moon is not visible in the sky at all. The new moon is actually consisting of three phases onto itself. The dark phase, the transition in which the moon is coming out of the darkness and becoming visible once again and then the new moon itself when it's completely visible as a crescent in the sky before it becomes it starts to transition into fullness once again so that's the classic new moon phase um, it's the quintessential shape of the crescent moon that we think of when we think of a new moon so in this dark phase, we have the Eight of Swords, Knight of Pentacles, and Eight of Cups. And the dark phase can also be equated to the um, unconscious happenings within us or the shadow activities that are happening within us. A dark phase, when there is no illumination, indicates a shadowy period. So this is a mysterious period. This is a period when we have more contact with the unseen and unknown worlds, with the invisibles. This is a period in which we have more contact with the unconscious worlds, the subconscious worlds. Um, there's a shadow side and a light side to this phase or this period of time. Uh, we can be more in tune with our intuition, with our dreams particularly, and also with any form of intuition or psychic abilities. We can be more in tune with the invisible, such as um, better equipped to practice mediumship or divination or to contact spirit guides. So this is an interesting time and during this time, there can be things bubbling up inside of us that are still sort of abstract, still unformed. This is a watery time. This is a um, transitional time of, um, of abstraction, right? This is a time when things are trying to form, but they aren't yet fully formed. So these cards are about the things bubbling up inside of us, whether it's emotional, whether it's um, mental, you know, that aren't quite yet with, within our grasp. Things that we haven't pinned down that aren't completely clear to us yet. The Eight of Swords suggests that there are things hidden to us and that it will be good for us to break free from our shackles in regard to uh, emotional bondage of sorts. So now I'm looking at all three of these cards, the Eight of Swords, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Eight of Cups once again. And this appears to me that there may be some things coming up within us that have to do with relationships that are not emotionally fulfilling for us and, uh, and relationships which cause us blockages of sorts or that cause us um, to be bound in our lives in a way that is not healthy or conducive for us fully flourishing 
as individuals and as the people that we want to be. So in other words, relationships that are in opposition to what we really need to be or really want to be doing in life, in opposition to what is in our highest good or in opposition to what we are aligned with or what we should be or need to be aligned with. So I'm seeing that there may be some uncomfortable feelings coming up around these relationships. So these feelings um, may be symbolized in our dreams. We may be getting a lot of messages. So we're looking at the dark phase of the moon before the new moon actually happens. So look to um, two or three days before that new moon on the 28th. And um, we may feel uncomfortable. We may start to feel like we are trapped in a way. Um, and it's really important, though, not to act from a place of anxiety, not to act from a place of fear, not to act from a place of impatience, but to take slow and measured steps and to really um, sit with the feelings and try to decipher where they're coming from, and then what is a healthy and beneficial way to act on those feelings. But it's definitely going to be a good time to walk away from those relationships and situations that are not serving us the way that we need to be served now. Maybe those relationships were serving you at some point, but now is a different time. Things have changed. You have changed. The next three cards are the Magician, the Chariot, and the Seven of Cups. So this is the transitional phase of the new moon. This is the phase in which some of that shadowy material is becoming um, clearer to us and is becoming ready for transformation or transition. It's becoming more available to us to grasp, to see, and to shape in, and mold into something that we can use to move forward and start afresh. It's becoming um, something that is uh, more tangible to us, something that we can um, change, something that we can actually um, sculpt with to help shape our near future. And the Magician card is definitely all about the agency that we have to uh, help shape our reality. So a lot of the guidance here is about staying focused on our individual paths. And really, this will be a time um, right before this new moon. So uh, maybe around the 27th, around the 26th. This is a good time to really evaluate or reevaluate or reassess what is best for us and as individuals and to take maybe a day, maybe even two days to just try to block out the messages that we receive from others around us and the all the different directions that the world is trying to pull us in. So this might even be a good time to do something um, a little bit radical or really centered on self-care such as a, a media fast you know a time to um, stop watching tv stop taking in the news stop looking at social media this kind of a fast um, or something similar may be helpful and recommended around that time and to really um, get back to and get clear about what your individual path is what is it that you focus on that you ideally want to see for yourself in the future? How can you mold that into one vision or one story or one idea, um, even if it's just a feeling that you can summarize it as um, something that you can focus on for your future direction because it's really time to get clear about what you need as an individual and the ability that you have to focus on and manifest what you need as an individual. Um, I can see that 
many of us will be feeling around that time that there are a lot of outside influences um, that we have internalized that um, are becoming too loud. Those voices are becoming too loud. Those influences are becoming too overwhelming and we may really feel like um, it's gotten to the point that we don't even know what we want versus um, what the world around us wants. Um, it does seem to be a time of high anxiety, so it's likely that um, we really need to sort out um, what do I want for personal fulfillment or personal joy versus what am I pulled towards from a sense of fear or because of a sense of fear, um, things of this nature. So sorting out um, what is underlying your impulses, um, especially the different impulses to act in terms of um, what your focus is on your life or um, what your goals are in your life or what you want to achieve or where you want your future direction to go to sort out the underlying in impulses under that. Are these ideas based on or stemming from fear and anxiety or stemming from outside pressures or stemming from negative self-talk or negative emotional abuse such as that arises during depression or are you motivated from a place of I want to be joyful, I want to live the best life I can, I want to be fulfilled, I want to do the things that bring me purpose, that offer me a stronger connection in life. And you have all the tools that you need to sort this out and you also have all of the tools you need to make what needs to happen for yourself happen. So that's the kind of energy that needs to be tapped into. What are the tools that I have available for myself and how can I start um, re-envisioning, re-imagining this uh, focus for myself? This is the time. And this will be a great time to gain clarity around those things. So that is some self-reflection that I would suggest around the 26th, 27th of July. Um, moving forward, we have the Wheel of Fortune, the Empress, and the King of Swords. These last three cards apply to the illuminated phase of that beautiful crescent new moon. And when we talk about illumination, we talk about what has come to the surface, what has come to light through these first through phases, first two phases. How has this shadow material been transformed? How has this underworld experience, starting with the dark phase, been transformed into an illumination in our life? What has been brought to light? What are we now clearer about? What have we formed out of that shadow material? The Wheel of Fortune certainly indicates a lot of synchronicity, a lot of blessings, a lot of good luck surrounding this new moon. Look for that feeling of um, synchronicity, of guidance, of good fortune, of things just falling into place, of feeling very blessed or surrounded with good luck, receiving messages left and right. Look for that around the 28th, the 29th, and even maybe moving into the 30th of July. So this will be really helpful for guidance um, regarding, you know, what are those actual next steps to take, the real world pra practical steps to take that can lead you towards that uh, focus that we discussed during the uh, transitional phase. And then we have the Empress and the King of Swords here. So there's a lot of interesting balance between our bodies and our minds. And um, I'm seeing that a, a stronger sense of alignment or a stronger sense of um, communication between those two aspects of ourselves 
is going to allow us to tap into this energy further. When I talk about tapping into the energy, I'm talking about tapping into the energy of the good fortune surrounding us at this time. So being able to make the most of that and being able to make the most of the guidance that we're receiving. With the King of Swords here, I can also see that a lot of the guidance we may receive um, around the new moon is going to be coming to us um, through clear cognizance, through clear knowing. So you can expect it to be a time where um, messages and information just kind of drops into our head or we could have um, sudden ideas and we don't really know where they come from. So you can look for that kind of guidance to be strong around that time and pay close attention to it because it may be really important. It may be um, significant for you in, in terms of moving your life forward in the way that we have talked about. It's going to be a good time for nurturing relationships and nurturing yourself. We talked about that mind-body connection. How can you become a bit more embodied during this new moon? How can you tap into what your body needs and what your body is telling you? And how can you create that stronger communication and connection between your mind and body? Your body is a key to um, moving you forward in the direction that you want. It will also be a great time for healing within your body, especially, I'm going to say it once again, especially if you're able to tap into a stronger mind-body connection, this will be a great time for healing on all levels and many of the uh, messages and much of the guidance that you may receive around this time is going to um, be about that healing. So it could be about what needs to be healed, what has been brought forward from those shadows and made clear to you. It may become more clear to you what needs to be healed, what needs to be attended to, what um, has been neglected or what has been forgotten, what has been left by the wayside. And how can that material continue to um, heal and be turned into something that can nurture you and assist you with growing? Um, this is going to be a very good phase for growing, um, not just for you as an individual, although that part of it is huge, but also a good time for growing something new, for nurturing important relationships, for starting new projects, for getting pregnant, for being creative, um, all kinds of fertile, creative growth energy surrounding us at this new moon and shortly after the new moon. So this is a huge, um, this moon to me feels like it's going to have a lot of very powerful energy, be a potent time, have a lot to offer us if we're willing to sit still and pay attention and do some reflection during this time or tap into our intuition and tap into the wisdom in our bodies during this time. Um, we can really um, grow a lot in a short amount of time. We can really um, have a lot more clarity and um, a lot stronger uh, understanding about ourselves and what we need as well as understanding about our relationships during this time. Very, very um, powerful moon. Wishing you many blessings and a happy new moon. Thank you. New moon forecasts are sponsored by my patrons by a mystic membership if you would like to receive these new moon forecasts one week in advance you can click the link below the video to see more about joining mystic membership there are many many benefits that are available to mystic members also don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video much love many blessings